He turned to his side and Kamadeva had a bow and arrows, like he didn't even bother trying to hide or anything. So Shiva was like, so you have chosen death. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name's Leanna if you're new and welcome to episode 13 of Makeup in Mythology, a series I'm doing on my channel where I do my makeup and also tell you an ancient myth. Last time we covered Dewi Sri, the Indonesian goddess of rice and agricultural fertility and how her body parts turned into very important crops for mankind. This week we are doing Kamadeva, the Hindu god of love and passion, the god who has said to awaken carnal desires in humans. So the word Kama means sensual desire. I'm assuming this is the same Kama in Kama Sutra. And Deva means divine being. So divine being of sensual desire, god of sex. So just like Cupid, he has an arrow that he can shoot people with. Whoever is struck with his arrow is aroused with passion and love. So Kama Deva looks like a young man and has greenish skin and his bow is made of sugar cane and its string is made of a line of honeybees. You ever hear that phrase, you can catch flies with honey? I don't know, honey, sweet, something, something. <laughs> his arrows are made from five types of flowers and he rides a green parrot. And he's oftentimes accompanied by his wife, Rati, the goddess of sexual desire. And he comes with the feeling of a gentle breeze and springtime. So according to the Shiva Purana, one of the 18 major Puranas, which are a genre of Sanskrit texts in Hinduism, Kamadeva was born from Brahma's mind, Brahma being the creator god. So Kama stood in front of his creator and was like, what is my purpose, father? Or more accurately, he asked, Kam Darpayani, which means whom shall I please? And this particular question is something that he is rather famous for. Whom shall I please? So Brahma answered, you are assigned with the task of ensuring eternal creation and multiplying the population. Basically, you're going to make people horny with your flower arrows and not even the other gods will be able to, you know, stop you. For there is no greater force than love and lust. One of the most famous Kamadeva stories is of when he disturbed Lord Shiva's meditation. So Shiva is one of the three gods in what they call the Trimurti, the other two of which are Brahma and Vishnu. Shiva is considered the destroyer in the trio. I feel like if you're gonna pick a god to mess with, you shouldn't pick the one that's named the destroyer, but okay. So in the trio, they say that he's the god responsible for destroying the universe so that it can be rebuilt. Kind of like, you know, when you chop off all the branches of a rose bush so that it can, you know, start growing again. Or like when a phoenix rises from its ashes. So it's, it's kind of like that, I think. So, you know, he's very big, very powerful. And what had happened was that Shiva's consort, Sati, engulfed herself in flames and killed herself because her father, Daksha, insulted Shiva. A little bit drastic, just a little bit drastic. She could have just been like, shut up, dad, I don't care about your opinion, but I guess entering into fire is fine too. So yeah, Shiva was obviously really upset because his consort just died and he abandoned his duties and decided to meditate and brood and be angsty, which, you know, understandable. So this led to a destructive imbalance in the world because he wasn't there to destroy stuff and rebuild it. So the world was suddenly in disarray and all of the other gods were really, really worried. So Sati was actually reborn as goddess Parvati. She wanted to marry Lord Shiva, but he just wasn't interested and chose to ignore her, which, you know, I'm not sure why, because that's literally his consort reincarnated, but maybe she wasn't thick enough for him or something, I don't know. So Brahma was like, ah, oh, man, dude, we need to get Shiva to like do his duties again and like make him a little happier because the world is kind of like falling apart without him. So he sent his son Kamadeva to go to Shiva and convince him to marry Parvati, his reincarnated wife. The God Indra, sometimes referred to as the Thousand-Eyed, told Kamadeva that the demon king Tarakasur could only be killed by someone who was the son of Shiva and Parvati. So obviously we need Shiva to sleep with Parvati and, you know, create this person who is going to kill the demon king. So Indra told Kamadeva to arouse passion in Lord Shiva, make him a little horny so that he'll agree to marry Parvati. So all these gods were like, yeah, sounds like a great idea, right? So Kamadeva and his wife Rati went to Shiva to accomplish his mission. So at this point, Shiva was still angstily meditating. He was like, I don't want to talk to anyone, you know, just leave me alone. And Kamadeva made several attempts to arouse passion in Shiva, but his actions were to no avail. So, you know, he probably tried to shoot a couple arrows and they like probably ricocheted off his meditative bubble or something. I don't really know the details. He failed to penetrate the meditative barrier. Just then, very conveniently, he saw Parvati walking by with some friends. You know, she was looking like a hot piece of ass, looking absolutely divine like the goddess that she is. And coincidentally, Shiva came out of his meditation, just briefly. 
just briefly. And so Kamadeva saw an opportunity that he should not miss, and he took it. So Kamadeva struck the Lord with his arrow, and it went in deep. And Lord Shiva was struck by Parvati's beauty, and he became really just fucking horny, I guess. So as we know, human guys can only use one head at a time, but Shiva could use both because he was a god. And his head up here was like, hold on, wait a damn minute. I don't like Parvati. And then he realized that something was up. Something was off. Something was suspicious. And so he realized that this was Kamadeva. And lo and behold, he turned to his side and Kamadeva had a bow and arrows. Like he didn't even bother trying to hide or anything. So Shiva was like, so you have chosen death. And his third eye opened and Kamadeva was reduced to ashes. <laughs> so Parvati was like, oh my God, he's a murderer. Ew, I don't like him anymore, <laughs> which is understandable. So Parvati went back home and Kamadeva's wife Rati wept inconsolably. And at this point, the other gods arrived on the scene just to see what happened. And there they found Kamadeva's ashes and Rati crying beside them. And basically they were just like, oh shit. And then they reassured Rati that Kamadeva would become alive again. So they visited Shiva and they explained to him that it wasn't Kamadeva's fault. And they explained to him how if he mated with Parvati, then their spawn would be able to kill Tarakasur, the demon king. Which I don't really know why they didn't just like tell him that in the first place. I'm sure he would have like accepted that as his duty. Maybe Kamadeva wouldn't have had to die that way. But you know what? Let's continue. Let's continue to see what happens. The gods were like, please, please bring him back to life. And so Shiva was like, ugh. Y'all are so annoying. Okay, fine. So he was like, yeah, he'll come back as the son of Krishna and Rukmini in the era of Dwapar. And a demon named Shambar shall throw him into the sea. He will kill that demon and then marry Rati, his wife, who would conveniently also be living by the sea. She'll find him, basically. But the other gods were like, um, can't you just like bring him back to life? Like here and now, like, can't you just like reverse the whole disintegrating thing? And um, Shiva was like, no, no, this is, this is the way I wanna do it. And so the other gods were like, okay, fine. So Rati went near the sea to wait for her husband to be reincarnated near there. And the other gods just went home. Shiva was still pretty upset after Kamadeva died and the whole world started to feel his wrath. All living creatures became terrified and prayed to Brahma to save them from Shiva's wrath. So Brahma went to Shiva and tried to convince him to let up just a little bit. And Shiva was like, damn, okay, I guess. Then Brahma carried Shiva's fury, his tangible fury, and went to the sea and told the sea to hold on to it until the final annihilation of mankind. Thus explaining crashing waves and the general fury of the sea. So Kamadeva was supposed to be reincarnated, right? He was supposed to be reincarnated and would be named Pradyumna. So Rati was told to take the position of a maidservant at the house of the demon Sambara, the guy that Kamadeva was supposed to kill. But then Sambara learned that Pratyumna, the reincarnated Kamadeva, would kill him. And so he kidnapped the baby and threw him into the sea, thus fulfilling the prophecy. And Pratyumna was swallowed by a big fish. Fishermen caught the fish and sold it to Sambara's cook. So when the belly of the fish was cut open, a beautiful baby boy was found. And shockingly, he was not dead. So that's how you know their seafood is fresh. Fresh. So it was decided that he would be placed in the care of Rati, aka Mayavati, the name she took when she became a maidservant in this demon's house. And this is a whole different demon from like the demon that Shiva and Parvati's child is supposed to kill. This is a separate demon. So Mayavati raised the boy and she expressed great sexual attraction to him rather than motherly affection, which was really confusing for him. And the boy was like, mother, why do you express feelings that are not befitting a mother? And she was like, oh, so, you know, it's not actually gross because you're not my son. You're the god Kamadeva. You're my husband. And you were reborn as Pratyumna and you were kidnapped from your parents by the demon Sambara, who I work for. When he heard this, he became really angry at Sambara for separating him from his parents. And so he killed Sambara and with Mayavati, he went back to Dwaraka the place where his real parents were. And all were impressed by his beauty and his resemblance to his mom. And his mother, Rukmini, recognized him immediately because of the strong motherly feelings. And they lived happily ever after. My guess is that after Mayavati and Pratyumna grew old and died, they were allowed to return to their 
you know, divine selves. And Kamadeva's time on the human world was probably like a punishment for him. I know this whole like reincarnating as a human and, um, you know, suffering on the mortal realm for a while thing is kind of common, especially in East Asian mythology. So I'm guessing it also might be applicable here, but it is just a guess. But you know, if not, they still lived happily ever after, um, you know. All is well for our main characters. So now we reach the point in the video where we ask what the moral of the story is. I'm actually not that sure, but if I had to guess, it would probably be don't disturb a mighty god when he's meditating. Otherwise, you will be reduced to ashes. So that is it for today, and that is it for my makeup look. I honestly really like blue. I really like blue eyeshadow. I wish I realized that sooner. I don't really like sync up my makeup looks with the story that I'm telling, but I should probably do that, right? It's like a missed opportunity if I don't do that. So I guess this blue represents the sea. <laughs> the sea into which uh, Shiva's rage became contained. Or, you know, it could be the sea that Kamadeva and Rati were reunited by, or, you know, the sea that Kamadeva was, you know, thrown into. You know, it's very versatile. Like, there's a lot of ocean in the story. So, you know, I did it. Yay. It wasn't on purpose though. <laughs> so that's pretty much it for today. As always, if you have any suggestions for future makeup and mythology videos, please leave them down in the comment section below. I read all your comments um, and I will be happy to take suggestions as well. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!